Hey guys, welcome back to History Facts. Today we are talking about intimacy in ancient India. Enjoy the video. Stretching from the Himalayas in the north to the Deccan in the south, India is among the world's oldest and culturally richest civilizations. It comes as no surprise then, that, at one point, it led the world in the development of ideas about sexuality. Not only were these topics of great individual significance to practitioners, but sex even took on a communal aspect by becoming deeply linked with religion. Thus, ancient India was a hotbed of discourse on topics such as love, sex, and marriage. This resulted in many books, poems, paintings, and other art forms from the time depicting or discussing sexuality openly. These artifacts today are priceless as they let us piece together an image of what love and sex were like in ancient India. Having conducted deep research, I have prepared a list of key facts regarding sexuality in ancient India that will provide you with the basics needed to understand the customs and traditions of the time. Pioneers of Sexual Literature Indian literature on sexuality is the earliest and the oldest in the world. The ancient Indians can be credited with this achievement because they adopted a pioneering attitude when approaching sex, and thus wrote about sexuality before anyone else was willing. This long and rich history of writing about sex also means that there is an abundance of material available. Despite this abundance, when discussing ancient India's sexual past, one well-known text that always comes up is the Kama Sutra. The Kama Sutra is an ancient Indian manuscript on subjects such as eroticism, pleasure during sex, and sexual positions. The latter aspect has earned this text fame both inside and outside of India, irrespective of the time period. Ancient India was also one of the few, if not, the only place in the world, where one could receive sexual education if they desired it. Of course, this sex ed was nothing like it is now. There were no classes or curricula, instead, sexual education took place through books such as the Ananaronga. Often, the literature provided one with an overarching understanding of sex rather than giving specific instructions about safety or anatomy like the books of today. In fact, quite often, the subjects discussed in these texts would be quite open-ended and philosophical in nature. For example, chapters on subjects such as internal sensuality and eroticism were a common occurrence in these texts. If reading is not your forte, you have nothing to worry about. The ancient Indians also conveyed basics about anatomy and sex through paintings and rich illustrations. This allowed those who could not read, most people at the time, to still gather a basic idea about what to do. With ancient sexual customs, incestuous relationships. The ancient Indians were also somewhat accepting of a form of sexuality that, even in the modern day, is not viewed fondly. Incest. Incest is discussed and portrayed openly in much of the Indian literature from the time. A prime example of this can be found in the Harivamsa Purana, during the account of sage Vashishta and his daughter Shatrupa, a sexual relationship between the two is depicted. The manuscript further goes on to mention that Shatrupa thought of sage Vashishta as her husband. This activity was known as Kortubic sex and was prevalent in the ancient culture. Even in religious texts, one can find examples that depicted incestuous relationships. In Rig Veda, Diaus, the father, engages in sexual intercourse with his daughter Usha. In this story though, the act of sex is deemed immoral. Even in the retellings of this story in later texts, the concept of incest is rejected. Two thousand years after the Rig Veda, Diaus, now Brahma, is deemed unworthy of worship. Despite being the creator of the universe, he is shunned by Shiva and has his fifth head cut off for his unholy behavior. These contrasting ideas of incest tell us that it did have a place in ancient Indian society. Whether or not it was practiced openly is up for speculation. What we do know is that today, the subcontinent features an array of cousin marriages, which have been increasingly normalized. Chakra Puja, orgies under the cover of darkness. Many ancient Indian shastras, manuscripts, hint towards the existence of a sexual game called Chakra Puja, also known in some sources as Ghat Kanchuki. To play, a group of individuals would meet together at night, importantly, there would have to be an equal number of men and women at the gathering. 
when everyone had gathered, the women would take off their clothes and put them all in a large pot. It was now up to the men to each choose a cloth from the large pot. When this was done, each man would be matched up with the woman whose clothes he picked. The couple would then share a bed and engage in intercourse that night. Interestingly, this game seems to have taken place irrespective of the participants' relationship statuses and castes. Thus it would seem to suggest that this could have been a rare event where interaction and even intercourse between the castes were tolerated. What was marriage like? Of course, everyone could not only participate in late-night orgies all the time, marriage was still an important institution in ancient India, especially for the purposes of building a family. Staying true to its diversity, ancient India was accepting of polygamy, polyandry, and, of course, monogamy. Polygamy, the practice of a man marrying multiple wives, was particularly popular among the ruling and upper classes in ancient India. For them, leaving behind a dynasty or a strong family was important and so having a lot of children to carry forward the name was crucial. Conversely, polyandry, the practice of a woman marrying multiple husbands, also seems to have been practiced, particularly to the north of India in the regions bordering the Himalayas. In fact, examples of this can even be found in ancient Indian literature. In the Sanskrit epic, the Mahabharata, Princess Draupadi is depicted as having had multiple husbands. Marriage is never only sunshine and rainbows though, this was especially true regarding the custom of sati, widow burning, in ancient India. When a man passed away, it was seen as his widow's duty to be burned alive in the funeral pyre alongside the husband's corpse. This behavior was viewed as a means of preserving the woman's purity and loyalty to her husband. By dying with the husband it would be ensured that the wife would not develop relations with another man. Unfortunately, this practice extended even after the time period we refer to as ancient India and continues, in some remote areas, to this very day. Liberal attitudes for choice of sexual partner. As has been proven already, ancient India was a remarkably open and accepting society when it came to sexuality and eroticism. This philosophy of tolerance was even extended to the choice of sexual partner. One illustrative example of this open attitude was the acceptance of premarital sex in ancient India. This has been rare in history as most civilizations and religions tend to enshrine marriage as a prerequisite for sex. In ancient India, however, epics such as the Mahabharata, describe the story of Rishi Parosha and Satyavati Matsyanganda, a couple that not only engaged in premarital sex but even went all the way and had a child out of wedlock. Tantric Sex In ancient India, there existed a unique relationship between sex and religion unlike anywhere else. The two had been interwoven together through a rich history of epics, stories, and rituals. Tantric sex was one more product of this close relationship. In its essence, Tantra was the practice of attempting to reach spiritual enlightenment and oneness with God and divinity through sex. This is because the ancient Indians believed that sexual pleasure, in combination with other things, could help bring about spiritual and religious experiences. The manuscripts detailing these practices originated from the peripheries of India in places such as Nepal and Kashmir but later spread to the rest of the country over time as the ideas gained traction. Tantric sex itself could be practiced in a few ways. One could engage in sex and violence at the same time, although we wouldn't recommend that, undergo a specific erotic ritual with a female partner, or even drink certain intoxicating cocktails to get closer to God. Whether or not tantric sex actually works is up in the air, although it might seem tempting to many. Thanks for watching. Do like, subscribe and comment.